Hey guys, welcome to Testing Academy. And in this video, we are basically going to revise our API testing interview question and answers. This is clear now. Very important question, which is now let's jump to the another question, which is type of API testing. People forget uh, completely whenever I ask this, uh, what are the types of API testing? They just say one thing, which is functional testing. That's it. And uh, uh, I don't know why, but uh, please understand and note down this. Uh, this is this as a PDF is already available at the as that dot live slash notes. So you can download it. It's okay. These notes as a PDF are available. So don't worry about it. Uh, first of all, whenever we say types of API testing, API tested uh, APIs are, give me one second. Awesome. So, uh, mostly whenever, uh, someone asks you that what type of API testing are there, right? You are basically going to tell that, uh, basic, you can do functional testing with the APIs. Functional testing is nothing, but you will do black box testing where you don't know about the, you will basically checking all the API based on the requirements, whatever the requirements are there. Suppose there is a student API. Okay. And uh, requirements are uh, role number should be number, right? It can be requirement. Uh, name should be in string. Uh, there can be only hundred thousand, uh, students in the one class. So these are functional requirement based on the API. So that we, you will be checking UI testing is nothing, but whenever you integrate this API with the UI, right? I have told you right browser UI, you have a UI here, sky scanner application and API. What will happen? So you need to check integration in this case, right? Load testing is nothing, but you will basically check uh, what will happen if I uh, basically call this API simple student API like thousand time. What will happen? Right. Runtime errors. I will check, uh, if there are, uh, exceptions, if I add an invalid role number, invalid username, name, invalid, uh, student, what will happen in this case, you will verify the status code, invalid JSONs and other things, right? Uh, security testing and penetration testing. Basically you try to penetrate that API APIs, uh, basically, uh, for user authentication as well as, uh, a couple of other authentication authorization, right? Uh, the APIs are already available and those API, you can do a security test on that, right? So security test, generally people ask you this question related sometimes, uh, what are the test cases in security test case that you will be performing for this API? Okay. And I have created a video around this, watch the video where I have specifically discussed how to do a security test for an API. Okay. And I'll link the a link in the description also, or you can directly uh, go to youtube.com slash playlist and there's a search button and you can click on and search the security test cases for the API. I'm going to give you a couple of them. For example, student API, you can check for authorization. You can check for, uh, user privileges, right? And you can check, uh, if the API, uh, if I am as a manager, I can't, uh, I can't log in as a, uh, employee or employee can't log in as a manager by manipulating and doing some uh, dirty stuff, right? By doing some fuzzy, fuzzy testing and other things, right? Those things. So, uh, fuzzy testing is nothing but, uh, putting any invalid or, but just a fuzz kind of an input to the APIs so that they, and we want to note down how they behave, right? So that you can do it. And, uh, validation testing is nothing but whatever the response that you are getting, you have to validate that, right? So these are the type of testing you will be doing. And most of the time, I think, uh, around 70% you will be doing 70% you will be doing this only 10 to 30% you will be doing this. But if you are a security tester, this is hundred percent for you guys, <laughs> right? Let's jump to another question. Uh, the question is what is, uh, the type of web services? People ask this question. I think I have already given you answer rest soap and RPC RPC are nothing but a remote procedure call. What, what is happening here? Pramod client is there. Server is there. You are directly calling the, uh, here are set of functions available. You are directly calling the functions here. So that is uh, RPC communication basically happens in JSON XML. So in JSON payload, you are directly calling the servers functions and they are replying back. Okay. Whereas in the soap and rest, it's little different. Okay. In the soap, we are basically sending all the message in a envelope format and to the server server understands it and reply back in the envelope format. Whereas in the rest, it's just like an open postcard. Uh, it's a very lightweight. We are sending it to client to server and server reply back in a simple postcard way. Pramod, what is this uh, envelope and 
envelopment postcard let's understand in the next question okay don't worry let's understand the soap now soap basically means it's a simple object access protocol what we are accessing is nothing but client is accessing the server's objects okay now how they can do that they can uh, do that via uh, the stpp smtp and ftp protocols okay now uh, this is the message if you have seen this kind of message generally soap uses it's first of all it's xml based and you will see a, a body part right and here it it basically sending some data like csv 10 something right uh, you can see we are sending year we are sending uh, fips but i don't know what is it but format right and we are sending it to this url this say there here the service is available this is server address and client is sending this information to server and server will be reply back based on the logic for example client can say to what is 2 plus 2 and server will reply 4 right and the data is basically if you see it's basically packed in an envelope form right that's what is and xml only xml we are using and here is another example where we are sending the return url and other things okay so, so soap envelope can be can include headers headers can include body right and the url related information cool it's an envelope we call it envelope that's why xml we are sending xml we are getting this is a client this is a server this is a system and generally we are calling it as a system one and system two this is soap okay now soap messages is heavy as compared to the rest that's why there is a major difference and we'll see the difference afterwards let's understand and go through the rest also cool what is rest rest is nothing but a representational state transfer and with this statement you understand nothing i'll tell you in a very simple manner rest is nothing but a architectural style to develop web services or api very simple way very simple way someone asks you what is rest rest is nothing but a design pattern to design design pattern for an api to develop okay if you want to develop an api if you are using this uh, this constraint if you are following this constraint if you are using a design pattern if you are using this architectural style you your uh, your apis will be rest in nature why we are using rest uh, is basically uh, rest basically works on a stpp protocol it basically supports all the major stpp methods it's a lightweight in nature and basically suppose now you are using a post method you just need to create a payload and send to server server will reply back to you in the as a response okay so client is there server is there okay cool interesting give me one second okay so uh it's a architectural style that i have told you right it's a basically a api whenever it's a kind of you can say design pattern to develop an api right uh, it works like it's uh, resources so in rest what i uh, in most not in rest actually uh, rest basically works with the stpp method that i have told you right it's basically works on a stpp protocol and stpp protocol uses stpp methods stpp methods are nothing but get post put delete patch all these extra methods right so these methods are uh what uh, so everything in the stpp which is hypertext transfer protocol it's a resource so resource can be a html page that you are seeing right now a streaming video file text file and any kind of a media that you see right it's a resource that you are seeing right and uh, we can transfer the resource from client to server over the stpp protocol that's what it basically is and the rest basically utilizes that stpp okay now basically let's discuss about the major difference between the soap that i have told you right soap as the rest uh, rest is lightweight it's human readable you can understand the rest response right it's a human readable that i have told you it's easy to understand right uh, cones are it's just a point to point con point to point communication right so directly client to server and that's it let's so lack of standards so rest uh, has a lack of standard basically the implementation of post right it can for example 
there there are certain developers who can only who are only using post for all the st all the methods for example they can use post for the updating the resource even for deleting the resource so there is a lack of standards there right it's basically tied to stpp that's the sole way, sole way whereas if you see so it it is easy to consume usually right and it supports basically wsdl right it's a distributed comuni- computing uh it is more difficult to set up a soap uh, engine right now and it's also soap is kind of outdated and if you are someone who is basically running i think uh i mean if you are working in a company 80% chances you will be working on the rest only that's what i have seen it's more verbose and hard to develop so here is the difference if you see uh in soap basically it's a xml that you are seeing right we have envelope we have body and all the features where the rest is nothing but a proper url that you are sending with the parameters and the payload that's it right okay and here is the difference uh, between both of them i hope you are it's little blurry but uh, Re- soap is a protocol it's a architectural style a full form is a simple object uh, simple object access protocol it's a representational state transfer soap can't use rest because it's where it's a protocol but rest can use soap reverse is true because rest is architectural style right uh so uh, here there are other difference also uh uh so soap has a defin- uh, i mean stroke is a strictly followed standards rest has a lack of standard that we have already discussed right uh soap require more bandwidth which is re- important skills uh it's require less bandwidth because directly we are sending right uh soap has a known sort security it basically relies on the stpp or uh, security that they provide it's xml based here you can have xml json anything rest right uh, soap is more uh, preferred as compared to rest which is really important right in simple words i would say uh, soap is like using an envelope that i have told you right it has extra weight more bandwidth more work whereas uh, so rest is like a postcard lightweight can be updated and easier to maintain cool that's the major difference